So what do perfume, fast food and organ donation have in common? <laughs> well, nothing except that they've all been marketed using highly sexualized images of women's bodies. Now these are all real advertisements and they're not particularly exceptional. So the use of highly sexualized imagery, particularly of women's bodies, has become so prevalent in advertising that many of us may be even unaware of its presence by now. But what these ads exemplify is that the sexual objectification of women is now a pervasive part of our culture. And probably like many of you, I had become somewhat desensitized to images like these, um, having been surrounded by them for practically my whole life. And then about two years ago, I got a rude awakening. A close friend of mine who had just moved to New York to work as a freelance journalist wrote this piece in The Guardian. And it was entitled, An Open Letter to All My Male Friends. And in this piece, she described a, an incident in which she was first verbally and then physically sexually harassed by a man on the streets of New York. And you can read her description, brief description of the event here. And what this made me realize is that sexual objectification of women is not just something that you see on billboards or advertisements. It's something that unfortunately rears its ugly head in women's daily lives, probably far too common, far too often. So together with colleagues at the University of Melbourne, we set out to try to understand what sexual objectification, um, how it impacts women in their daily lives. And we realized that this hadn't actually been done very much in research at all. And we sought to understand two basic questions. First, how common is it in daily life? Now, according to my friend's account, this was an practically a quotidian event, and not just in New York City or other American cities, but here in Australia too. And secondly, we sought to understand how it impacts women psychologically. And again, my friend's description of her response to the event was quite mixed and complex. So to do this, we recruited a sample of 81 young women, mainly students, living in Melbourne, and we asked them to complete 10 short smartphone surveys each day for seven days. Now each survey asked these women to indicate whether they had themselves been targeted by a number of common sexually objectifying behaviours, or whether they had witnessed other women being targeted, and also asked them about their momentary experiences of, of negative emotions and their preoccupation with their own bodily appearance, something we call body monitoring. And what we found was not all that exceptional in, in terms of what had been found before, but was quite shocking. Our participants reported 812 separate incidents of sexual objectification in just one week. 300 of these were directly targeted at our, at our participants. These were young women walking around the streets of Melbourne for a week. 75% of the women in our sample were targeted at least once in seven days. So this works out to the average woman being targeted about once every two days, particularly in this young age range. In terms of the types of incidents that were reported, by far the most common was what's termed the objectifying gaze. This involves being looked at or ogled in a sexual way. But other more overt and, and um, shocking forms of objectification were reported too. Things like being uh, catcalled, wolf whistled, even being touched or fondled against one's will. In terms of its impact on women, what we were interested in is something called body monitoring. Now this involves a kind of a preoccupation with one's own physical appearance from an outsider's perspective. And previous research has shown that Body monitoring has a host of negative side effects for women, including reducing their ability to focus on tasks that they're engaging in, increasing the experience of negative emotions, and eventually over time, leading to greater vulnerability to mental illness, uh, disordered eating, and depression. So what we, are, what we wanted to see was how exposure to objectifying events in daily life would impact women's level of body monitoring. Now what we found, if you look at the white bar, was that women were moderately preoccupied with how their bodies appeared to others, even in the absence of any objectifying events in the preceding time period. However, this increased substantially when they witnessed another woman being objectified by about 10%, and even more increased by about 35% when they themselves were targeted. So this helps us begin to understand what kinds of psychological impacts uh, the experience of objectification may have on women in daily life, 
and we hope to try to understand its flow-on consequences as well. Thank you.